So we officially have two days now until Amazon's Rings of Prime goes live. Uh, of course, my wife and I, we're going to be hate watching it. And don't give me crap about it. I'm already paying for Amazon. And Amazon's not going to be honest about the numbers of viewers anyways. So at least the best I can do is watch it, give my review of it, and uh, give it a <laughs> fair thrashing as it will deserve. Um, I just want to get a few thoughts off my chest before before this actually happens, though. Stumbled upon this article while I was looking up some other stuff about the show from uh, Bounding Into Comics from a YouTuber uh goes by the name of The One Ring. So obviously he is a Tolkien uh, nerd, like very, very many of us are. But they spelled it out very well in this article, um, exactly the things that are wrong with this show. I'm going to go through these a little bit and then kind of wrap it up with my thoughts, uh, overall my impression of what I've seen. Because um, obviously the trailers haven't given us anything substantial to go off of, just a bunch of fluff and filler and really cheesy, shitty one-liners and the Vanity Fair soap opera crap. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into this. Uh, YouTuber eviscerates the latest The Rings of Power trailer. Doesn't resemble anything J.R.R. Tolkien wrote to say otherwise is a lie. Which, I mean, I think we could all basically assume that on our own. But let's just continue through the article. Uh, in a video titled The Rings of Power is not Tolkien's story, this trailer confirms that YouTuber The One Ring took to task the latest and what some believe to be the final trailer for Prime Video's Lord of the Rings. Okay, so we it is the final trailer. It literally comes out on Friday. We got two days. So, he begins the video by stating the trailer shows us more of the characters in the world that Amazon has created in the Rings of Power and none of it resembles what Tolkien wrote. Fair enough. This trailer it dives even harder into that reality. It is truly the novel Tolkien never wrote because he never would have written it. Um, which reference, you know, Patrick McKay's, one of the showrunners, comments to Vanity Fair when he said he wanted to create the novel that Tolkien never wrote. I mean, mission accomplished. Here you go, guys. One Ring then asserts, so let's take a look at this trailer and talk about all the issues that it has because it does not resemble Tolkien. In fact, there's almost nothing in this trailer that resembles it. Damn, advertisement jumped in the way for a freaking senator. Get out of the way here. <laughs> so we can just continue on the article. It has Galadriel and Numenor, he continues. It has Elrond lecturing Galadriel. It concentrates on the Meteor Man, which I'm not quite sure what that's referencing. Um, all of these things are not anything Tolkien ever wrote. Almost the entire trailer, you can't point a direct line between what Tolkien wrote and what's shown in this trailer. He then posits, none of it, none of it, none of it shows me that they have respected his works or, to quote them, gone back to the books. Um, after watching a brief clip of the trailer where Galadriel indicates she's going to avenge her brother's death, this is something that I had already thought of that I wanted to bring up, so I'm really, really glad that he brings it up in very specific detail about the way that the events actually unfold in the book. And this is key. This article is fantastic because it actually points to the very issue with making Galadriel's character front and center and the way that they're portraying her in this show, at least with what we've seen. Forget about just the black dwarf and the black elf or elf of color or dwarf of color, female dwarf, whatever the crap. You know, that we knew they were going to try to interject that, and I'll get into that in a few minutes. But more essential to the issues, the, the very flawed nature of the show is exactly what we're going to get into right here. Um, first of all, if she's talking about Finrod Felagund, so, okay, the trailer alludes to the fact that she's going to be avenging her brother's death, first and foremost, that, like, her brother's died, and she's going to go take up his mantle and go do what he couldn't do. So, first of all, if she's talking about Finrod Felagund, her brother, who was with Baron and was killed by Sauron's werewolves, this is not how it would have happened. Her whole line that she is there to avenge his death has no basis in anything Tolkien wrote. She was with Melian the Maya in Doriath and didn't spend her time avenging the deaths of her brothers. She spent her time essentially trying to evade the doom of the Valar because she took part in the kinslaying at uh, Alqualande, I think it is pronounced, I can't remember. So for her to be in this role of Avenger is nothing that can be pointed back to what Tolkien wrote, it's just not there. And this is really important. Not only is she not this avenging character, she was never a warrior. The books, the Cimmerillion, all these, these things that came before Lord of the Rings point to her being nothing more than she was important, she was there, she was one of the, the first line of uh, the, the elves that left Valinor, but she was not this force to be reckoned with that was making, you know, earth-shattering decisions and on, the, on the front of battles and all that kind of crap, the, the way that they're trying to portray the character. He then points to a line Morphe Clark delivers as Galadriel when she says, not fate nor destiny, ours was the work of something greater. 
The One Ring notes, that makes her sound like Gandalf when Gandalf would speak of things happening with greater purpose, which is a call to the will of Iluvatar, the god of Arda, the god of Ea, god of the whole universe, and how he wills, he works things to happen. She is running from the doom spoken over her, and for the longest time she could not face it until the Fellowship of the Ring when Frodo offers her the ring, and she says, I pass the test, I will diminish and go into the west and remain Galadriel. So you have this character, and for people who don't know, the, the long and the short of it is the, Cimmeril, the Cimmerils were, were crafted um, by Fëanor, who, when they were stolen by uh, Morgoth and Ungoliant, um, he then made an oath with his sons, basically saying that they wouldn't rest or let anyone else have the Cimmerils until they went and recovered them. And in the process of leaving to go chase him uh, through Middle Earth, they basically—I don't—it wasn't called Middle Earth then, but just bear with me. They ended up slaughtering a bunch of elves and stole their boats in order to sail out of there. That was the curse. That was basically the, the kinslaying that they're referring to with Galadriel's character. Very essential to what then transpired in the Cimmerillion, because everything that Fëanor and his sons touched and everyone they came into contact with basically had this doom fall onto them. It was like the original doom before the curse of the One Ring, okay? So... He then points out the idea that she is the driving force for everything is not supported anywhere in Tolkien's works. And in fact, we see Halbrand, another new character who is not supported in Tolkien's works. No shit, he's like, he's like the, the bargain budget uh, Aragorn here, you know? He's like, well, we need Aragorn, but we're not going to get a Viggo Mortensen, and we need somebody who's going to be more... He's going to take a back seat to her, because she's just amazing. Um, so he, he, the one ring goes on. I wish they would have gone back and given us something to say... Oh, look, this right here, this character, this point, this place, this meeting of characters is spoken directly by Tolkien. There's absolutely zero events like this in the trailer. There's nothing, nothing that is like, oh, this is right here. This comes from what Tolkien wrote or from what Tolkien even said in his appendices. And so it goes on. The article is really well written. I would say I'm going to link it down below. Definitely go through it and read it. Um, in fact, I got halfway through it and decided just to use this as a reference. So it's it continues on. It goes through the Queen region of Numenor. Tarmiriel, I think her name is, um, who was supposed to be queen, and then she got usurped by, I can't remember his name. Um, basically, the long and the short of it is, they are going to put the female-centric spin on this. And trust me, it's going to be female-centric. We've seen that in the trailer, and they've admitted to it themselves. So what we have now is we have actors like this Lenny Henry, who's playing a black Harfoot, not a Hobbit, because apparently they can't use that name, but a black Harfoot who actually says, it doesn't matter if the characters being you know portrayed don't match what the books say because basically tolkien's dead we're telling the story now you know one of these we're telling the story that he never wrote kind of thing going on about how great it is that they have this multicultural civilization of hobbits but not hobbits harfoots not hobbits <laughs> like this is some crowning achievement because this is the 21st century as he says and they people should see themselves on the screen me as a short uh short white man with a bad back and Crohn's disease, I've never looked at a TV screen and thought, I need a superhero that I can identify with. It's fiction. It's, it's more than your skin color. I, don't, I just don't believe that every black man watching a, a TV show identifies with every black person on the screen. You're, you're more than your skin color. I'm sorry, I thought we were better than this. So again, this is where they, they spew this uh, idea that we're all a bunch of bigot, racists, uh, homophobe, whatever you want to call us. You got Morfid Clark, the one who plays this uber-powerful Galadriel, Miss Best, you know, Best Warrior ever, telling critics to shut the F up because she believes that all the criticism is just because her castmates are black. You've got Ismail Cruz Cordova, who plays the... They say... They've said black elf, but I don't... I don't know if he's Hispanic or black. I don't really care either way. It doesn't fit with the actual established world. And this is where I'm going to like draw the line. Same with the, the elf Disa played by what I, whatever her name is, Namvedi something. He goes on to say, there will no longer be a time where you can say there are no elves of color. How about this? Is Lord of the Rings the only universe that exists? I grew up watching Willow. Great movie. There were the little people. I, uh, they were called... Crap, I can't remember what they, they were called them in that movie. They were white. They were Hispanic. They were black. I'm sure there was an Asian one I must have missed somewhere in there. Because the established lore was written by a man who didn't write it for an English-centric uh, mythological purpose. Tolkien wrote 
Lord of the Rings to have a mythology for England. England, which back in the 1920s, which I would guess was 99.999% predominantly Caucasian, English-speaking people. It would only make sense that the people and the characters he created for an English mythological story would represent, once again, that term represent, the people that he was writing it about. There is nothing racist about that. There is nothing bigoted to point that out. And the gaslighting that has gone into this, I mean, even the, sh the showrunners, two weeks ago, were calling people racist ahead of time. It's like they've already, they've, it's, it feels like the characters weren't a diversity hire, they were a diversity shield. Okay, so we know the show's going to suck because we've got progressives writing it. We've got, uh, you know, lunatics running the show. And so if we're going to do this, we need to hire some diversity hires because we need to have a buffer to where if people say this show looks stupid, it doesn't follow Tolkien's storyline, Galadriel is way, way not even close to what she was in the books, they can go, oh, look, 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 you're a bunch of racists. You just don't like the fact that there's brown people in there. Now, the fact that there are people with dark skin playing characters that wouldn't have been dark skin, yes, that's a problem. I have a much bigger issue with Galadriel. I have a much bigger issue with the bastardization of the story and the level of disrespect that they're showing. And so I'm going to watch it. I'm going to leave my review. I'm going to go on IMDb and I'm going to go on uh, Rotten, uh, Rotten Apples. Not Rotten Apples. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, I'm tired. And we're, we're just going to do this thing and we're going to see how it plays out. And I'm not going to be objective because they haven't been objective. They haven't been fair. They've called people bigots and racists before the shows even come out. So you can't call a stranger a bigot and expect an objective view. I am going to watch it, though. I'm going to see how much they get right and if they even attempt to come close to anything resembling Tolkien's story. My guess is the answer is going to be no. But we're just going to have to wait and see. So I should have a review video done and ready for probably the weekend, and if not the weekend, hopefully next week. That's it. Good luck, guys. Here we go. If you like the video, please consider subscribing, leave a like. And uh, this is going to be messy.